Hello, and welcome back to the Reich Forum. Today, first time for me, all right, I'm going to teach you guys something. I'm going to teach you a little bit about AC systems. So the AC quit on this tractor when we were planting and couldn't figure out why. Uh, so I went through and diagnosed it. And what I figured out is, if I crawl up here, up here in the roof, we have what you call a thermostat. And basically on, on this tractor, it actually acts as a relay too for providing power. A lot of times it's just in line with the circuit and long, as long as this probe here, which goes into your evaporator and it senses when it's getting too cold because if your AC is too cold, the air blowing through it, this will start to freeze up and then you won't get any airflow because it'll literally just coat be a sheet of ice. So you won't get any airflow. <clears throat> so something happened in the old one, in this old one, something happened to it and it, the relay wasn't switching and we weren't getting the compressor and all the the high and low pressure switches to kick on to, to run the air in the cab and be nice and cool. It was getting pretty warm in there. So, so I was going to teach you about AC systems. Um, so, the part that cools the air that goes into your cab would be your, your evaporator. You also have your heater core in front of it which your heater hoses run to over there from the cooling system down front, pushes it up through usually a pillar in the cab. And then you have coolant run through there. That's what provides your heat when you turn your knob for the heat in the cab. Uh, now, not all AC systems are like this. I know as far as agriculture tractors, uh, a lot of the older ones, it's in the roof here. A lot of newer tractors, it's actually under the operator seat which is a pain to get to sometimes. Uh, near your evaporator, you'll have your, your high side switch. High side, low side. Yeah, so you'll have your you'll have your high side switch in the roof, low side switch down here, and that's basically just testing pressure. So if the pressures go wrong in the AC system, it'll actually kick out your compressor here, and it won't let it run. Uh, up front, right here, you have your condenser, uh, which cools the warm air the radiator fan pulls air through cools down your condenser to help make cooler air and then it goes through the expansion valve in the roof right behind that high side switch which then makes the air really cold goes through your evaporator and the airflow comes through and down out of your vents in cold air uh, so be your compressor high side 134 fitting, low side 134 fitting. And of course, got your wires to your compressor. You got your power and ground. I know I think I was when I was looking at it, I'm like, it looks like it has two ground wires. Usually the clutch is grounded through the compressor or it has a ground wire and goes straight to the frame. This one does not. They actually run a dedicated ground back through the wiring harness somewhere. So I did some testing and tested some wires, tested the switches, and this thing here ended up being the problem, which is the relay. So I have it installed down in here. 
find a better place for it. Here's your expansion valve. Uh, another thing, if you're using this to diagnose your own AC system, uh, if this gets dirty, that makes for bad cooling. Also, at least on agriculture side, inside this box, you can get a lot of buildup of dirt and it plugs up your drain tubes because once this gets cold, you have warm air from the cab being pulled from the exterior through the cab fan, through here, you get a lot of condensation up in there. If those drain tubes are clogged, then you get a water build up here, starts leaking to your cab. Then you get, may not fall here. And it fills up with water, not coming out your drain tubes. You end up with that mess there on the ceiling of like water and moldy stuff because it's not draining and that water's just laying up in that headliner. You don't want that. It doesn't look good. It looks awful. So I'm gonna get that thermostat uh, temp wire plumbed in there and now we're gonna test out the AC, make sure it's working good, make sure it's not, it is actually cooling because there is refrigerant in the system so it should work. Just wanna test it and make sure it's getting cold. So we'll do that. So let me get that wire up in there and I'll catch back up with you guys. Okay, so I got this temp probe over here right behind a compressor that can just sit back in there. It'll go into your evaporator down in here if you can see it. it goes into the side and that will keep it from freezing up and also let everything run now so that way It'll be nice and cold in the cab when we're working. Because it's not fun having a cab tractor and then not having any AC to sit in. It gets warm in there and then you open everything up and it's still warm and dusty. It'd be better just to have an open cab tractor than closed and no AC really. It's not fun. So this was our problem. Got that fixed. So, now we're gonna put it all back together. There's this cover, goes on top of there, so that way your airflow, you're getting all your airflow through that cold air down through. Another tech tip for you, AC systems. Make sure you're changing your cab filters at service intervals or whenever they look like they're really clogged full of dust. Because otherwise, you're not getting good airflow. It'll start pulling air from anywhere it can which is usually dusty air if it's not coming through a filter and it just clogs up your evaporator. And sometimes it's a lot of work to get them out. Cause you gotta recover the AC, take off the lines, take them out and wash them out. And you gotta be careful washing them cause the fins are very delicate. If you bend them, then you're not getting good cooling. So just maintenance. Maintenance is a big thing. Check your filters. Then you won't have problems. Hopefully. You'll, you'll probably still have problems. Everything breaks for some reason. At some point, nothing lasts forever. But check your filters. Okay. Let me get these covers back on and we'll test it. See if it's getting cold. Okay. So we got the roof back on. Or all back together. Rather. I'm gonna crawl down here without falling, hopefully. Hold on, you guys. Sit there for a second. Grab this stuff. Get all my tools out of my pockets here. Stay. Okay. Now, start her up, Let's see what it does. Oh yeah, I gotta put, I pulled this switch out cause I couldn't get to it. And a lot of times, a lot of times that your switch to control your cold air will actually have your thermostat I actually have your thermostat on it 
This one did not. This one's different. This one was different, it does not. So, put that on. What did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? I have it too far, don't I? Yeah, there we go. Ah. Ah, oh, she works. Okay. systems uh, they usually have a receiver dryer uh, which is a little it's probably about yay big can't quite fit your hand pull around a canister uh, that has a line going to it uh, your receiver dryer is supposed to keep any moisture out of your refrigerant system it'll collect in there anytime you open up the AC system you're supposed to replace it it doesn't I didn't see one on this tractor though it may not have one uh, every AC system is different. Every manufacturer makes something different. So, oh yeah, it's, oh, that's some nice pull here. Oh, oh, it 
get some ice. So anyhow, hope you heard. Hope, yeah. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I'll try and answer them. Uh, but thanks for watching. And Lord willing, we'll see you next time.